adjustments to income from schedule one line 26 let's go over that first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line now I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Schedule one and check it out if we could. Schedule one, additional income and adjustments. We're on page number two, which is gonna be the adjustments to income. And we're looking at that health savings account, which could be further coming from the form 8889. In a prior presentation, we went into more detail about the qualifications to be able to set up and put a deductible contribution into a health savings account, otherwise known as an HSA. But a quick recap here, you're going to need to have that high deductible insurance plan uh, generally. And then the tax questions that will come up are, in a similar way, I like to compare these kind of tax tools to say an IRA because I think people have a better understanding of how the IRA works. The question for taxes in points of time when we use these tools is, do we have a tax consequence when we put the money into the account, which is basically kind of like a normal financial type of account, a savings account or stocks and bonds, for example, in the case of an IRA, typically stocks and bonds in the case of a savings or a health savings account, possibly a savings account. We're gonna put that into a normal kind of account under the umbrella of a uh, tax tool, like an IRA or a health savings account. Do we get a benefit when we put the money in? And then the money will hopefully grow over time with interest that will accumulate or dividends if it was a mutual fund or the growth of the value of the stock, which is basically capital gain growth. Do we have to pay taxes as that money grows? That's the next question. And then when we take the money out, is there a tax impact when we take the money out uh, of the account? So here, when we're looking at the adjustment to income, we are questioning the initial putting money into the account and whether we get a tax benefit when we put the money into account. And uh, typically we could, that's the incentive to be putting the money into the account. Although it will be severely restricted, we won't be able to take it out unless we use it for the, the things that it's supposed to be used for. And otherwise it might have to be included in income or possibly subject to a substantial uh, type of penalty. So that's the general idea. So how do we put the money in there? Well, it could be something that is set up and helped to set up through the employer. So the employer might be helping out to set up the health savings account, even though the health savings account is typically something that could be movable fairly easy uh, by the employee if they were to change uh, jobs. If it was put in there by the employer, then you would think it would be pretty easily reported on the W-2 form. So you'd get the W-2 form, and then in box 12, I believe, you're gonna have this W, uh, which would say employer contribution, including amounts the employee elected to contribute using section 125 to your health savings account. So we'll be able to see that, and that'll be a, a, a fairly easy for us to see. So if I was to mirror that, we can say, let's go into our wages, and let's say that we have a W in box 12, and then I'm gonna say, let's say that they, they put in, the employer put in $1,000 into the health savings account. So I would have my data input screen here. If I go back on over, that might not be enough to pull in because there's still more information I might need from form 8889. Now also just to realize as I do that, this might be something that should be reduced from income. 
So that would mean that it might not be included then in uh, the wages. So, so the wages, if I earned 100,000, maybe we would have, uh, we would only have the 99,000 here. And then the social security, if it was, uh, may or may not be, if it was deductible for social security, you would have the social security and Medicare. I don't really want to change these because I want to keep, I don't, I don't want to have to change them every time. Uh, but just realize it should already be reduced uh, properly in the income boxes on the W-2 and then uh, put down here. Therefore, you might not have a deduction, but it already is accounted for because it's been included for income. So that's why the W-2 is kind of nice, but you'd have to be able to explain that to someone. So let's go then down to that 8889 just to check that out. So we're going to go to, 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 to form 8889. There it is. And so now it's it's defaulting to uh, the self only uh, plan. But you might have to add that information in order to, to pick it up. So it's still populating this form so that uh, we're attaching it. But you, you can see it's not something that's feeding into a deduction on the on the schedule one because the income we're imagining has already been reduced to the 99,000 because uh, of the W-2 has been reported thusly on the W-2. Now, if you set up this HSA and they only put $1,000 in, 